Hi, welcome to PSD Tuts. In this final 3D tutorial, we're going to look at how to wrap everything up lighting, shadows, reflections, and refraction. Moreover, we're going to make the whole scene look more uniform by using image based lighting techniques. So, here's our background a sunny day somewhere in Egypt. And let's add in this model of a James Bond era Aston Martin. If we select it, you can see I've already set the ground plane so that it matches the perspective of this scene. So this vehicle is now sitting flat on the ground, exactly as we want it. Let's for now hide this ground plane, it'll only get in the way. One thing we do want to do is to make sure the car is actually sitting directly on it, because we couldn't move it up and down without realising it. So we can go to the 3D menu and choose Snap Object to Ground Plane. And there it is, sitting directly on our ground. We can drive it forwards and backwards in the scene simply by pulling on this front face. To make it rather bigger though, let's move it across and bring it right up into the foreground. So we have a nice big Aston Martin in the front and we are just seeing all of that background very much as a backdrop to the car. Now, it's quite clear to me that this simply doesn't look as if it belongs in this scene. We've got this grey coloured car on a background that is largely browns, creams, with this dazzling blue sky above. We need to get some sense of that into the car. One way we can do that is by using image-based lighting, and here's how it works. We'll go onto the background, select all, and copy. So this is now copied to our clipboard, and let's deselect. When we select the car again, if we go onto the Environment tab in the 3D panel, we can now have a look at the Properties panel and we can see this little image-based lighting IBL panel at the top here. At the moment, this is defaulting to having a black background, so in fact it's not affecting the image at all. Let's make a new texture. and When we choose this, the default is to give us a texture that's the size of our clipboard. And we'll say OK to this. And right away, well, everything gets very much brighter. The reason for that is although we've made a new image-based light, you can see from the thumbnail here, it is just plain white. It's got no image in it yet. So let's now edit that texture. And we can paste in that scene we just copied. Let's now close this image-based light window. It'll say, do we want to save the changes? So we can say, yes, save it. And now there it is in the scene. And we can see our car. It's now taking on some more of the colouring of this background. There's a lot of stuff going around the outside here, and we'll look at that in a moment. The next thing we want to do is to select the car and we want to select the bodywork. If we just click on it again, that should be it selected. And if we go into our 3D panel, we can see indeed the car body is selected there. Now, we want this car to be a bit shinier. It's already got a high degree of shine on it, and that was put there by the original designer of this 3D model. Let's increase the reflection as well. And what we can see now is the car is starting to reflect some of that background. You can see the blue of the sky showing through here, and so on. Let's leave this reflection at round about 35% for now. We'll make a selection around our car, and let's do a quick test render. OK, that's not bad. It's a little bright, but there are some distinct problems here. Firstly, we're finding that the lighting on the car is coming from the wrong direction. Let's click to stop this render. Now, we can see the shadow of the car 
is in front of it and slightly on the left-hand side. When we look at the ground, we can see the shadow of this ornate roof shows that the sun is pretty much directly overhead and slightly to the left. So let's adjust the lighting. We can click on the little lighting button that appears uh, on our file, or we can go to the lighting tab and choose it that way. It makes no difference. We can drag this lighting button around until it matches the direction of the light in our scene. And I think it's pretty much about there. And you can see how the shadow of the wing mirror is now cast on the ground as well. It just adds a little bit of accuracy to it. So, with the light directly above, we're going to get quite a lot of glare off the front of the car. So let's take the intensity of this light down a little. And while we're here, let's soften this shadow so it's not so hard-edged. As we drag the slider, you can see the dot effect, and that's the best that Photoshop can do to give us the impression of a soft-edged shadow, at least in this preview mode. Let's switch to our marquee tool again, make a selection, and do another test render. OK, that's looking rather better. What we're finding now, though, is that although the car is reflecting the scene, it's reflecting rather uninteresting parts of the scene. And we can make that more interesting by adjusting the way that the image-based lighting works. So let's go back to our Environment tab. And let's now also set image-based lighting, so that image that we've pasted in there, as the background to our scene. And that means that Photoshop will be able to use this for refraction and for further reflection. When we switch to the Move tool, what we're now seeing is this rather bizarre ghostly overlay. And what that's showing us is the way that Photoshop takes the image we've set as our image-based lighting background and wraps it into a sphere. And if we drag on it, you can see that image moving around in the background. So what we've got to imagine is that image wrapped around the inside of the sphere, and this is what the car is reflecting. Now what this enables us to do is to drag it until we get the reflections on the car that give the impression that we want. We obviously want the sky to be at the top, but we can also get rather interesting reflections in the sides, and we can choose exactly how we want those reflections to look by dragging this image around until we get the reflections in the position that looks good to us. Now, we don't know what's on the right-hand side of this car, but let's assume it's a building similar to this one. We can got a bit of that being reflected in here now. If we keep dragging, we can get a bit more interest in the reflections in the hood of the car as well. So now we've got a bit of tree reflected and some sky. And that looks rather good to me. Let's switch back to our marquee tool so we hide that big overlay. And now we're seeing a much clearer view of our car. Let's try another test render. Now that's very nice. It's giving us a very good set of reflections that make it look altogether much more interesting. One thing we can look at now is the glass. And the glass at the moment has got some shine to it, but there's no real sense of it being glassy. So let's address that. We'll deselect, switch to the Move tool, and now when we select the car, the environment is no longer the active tab in the 3D panel, and so that image-based lighting map disappears. If we click again, we can now select the parts of the car to which we want to address, and you can see as we roll over it, different elements are lighting up. We've got the glass selected here. Now, normally you'd think glass is going to be uh, transparent, so the simplest thing to do, you might think, would be to take the opacity slider down. The trouble with doing that is that whoever made this 3D model has really hardly addressed the inside of the car.
we can see, for example, the rear of those brake lights showing through, and we can, in fact we can see one of the tyres showing through in here. So to make this more convincing, let's take the opacity down just a little, but let's instead increase the reflection amount. And while we're doing this, let's increase the refraction as well, so that the view that we do see through the car is then distorted. And let's try another test render and see how this looks. Now that's nice, that's much more convincing. I like the way it's shaping up. We've got our strong lighting coming from above on this side, but remember we're working in an environment where we've got white walls and they're bouncing light all over the place. So we want a bit more light coming from the other side as well. Let's go onto our lighting tab and add a new infinite light. Here it is now. Let's drag this across so it comes from this side of the image. Now, because this is light bouncing off these walls, we don't want it to cast the shadow because that would imply a directional light. So let's turn off the shadow setting in our properties panel. And let's also take the intensity of this light down quite a lot. We don't want it to be so bright, we just wanted to give a little bit of reflected light coming off the side there. I'm taking this down to 25%. As you can see, we've got some reflection going on in this ground. You can see the reflection of the archway and of the windows. So let's see if we can match that as well. We'll click on the car. We'll go to the Environment tab once more. And now let's have a look at our reflections. We can increase the opacity of the reflection. And you can see it showing up under the car here. But it's not a glass surface. It's a marble surface. So let's increase the roughness, and that will make the reflection fade away. The higher the roughness setting, the quicker it disperses. So there's our scene as it stands. Let's attempt a full render and see what happens. Now, doing a complete render of a scene like this is going to take some time. It's not a fast process by any means and Photoshop will try to estimate how long it's going to take. And here's its initial estimate, 101 days, 15 hours, or whatever. Fortunately, Photoshop can be very inaccurate with its estimates of time. So that 101 days has already dropped to 70 days, 67 days, and so on. And as it goes through, that's going to come down to a matter of minutes or perhaps hours if we're working on a very large image, but certainly not the days uh, that is indicated by this initial estimate here. However, we don't want to sit here for all this time, so let's pause this. And now we can look at the image in its rendered state so far. The car itself is looking rather good. I do like the look of this. We maybe need to address some other areas, such as these wheel hubs. So let's switch to the Move tool click on those, and as we drag over it, as I said before, we can see these different areas highlighting. So there are the wheel hubs selected, and if we look on our 3D panel, we can see it's the rims, as they've been called here, that's selected. Well, let's add a bit of reflection to those as well, just to make the whole thing more interesting. The car was a little dark, I think, in that last render. So let's select our main light again and make it a bit stronger. And now let's attempt a final render of this scene to see how it looks. Now once again, this is going to take some time to do. And you don't want to sit here for several hours waiting for this to complete. So let's skip ahead a few minutes in the end, this took about 15 minutes to render, and here's our final image. The car looks like it's sitting right in the middle of this scene. It's reflecting the environment. 
there are reflections of the car in the ground, the lighting is in the right direction, the shadows all correct. And when we compare this to how this car looked before we applied all these lighting effects to it, you can see we've really made a very big change. Using all the tools in Photoshop, you can produce some spectacular, convincing-looking 3D modelling without as much effort as you might expect.